So let's make sure we got everything going. So I have to just hit the open and then their mics. We're live. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. What is up, my exchange family from all of over the world and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Osby and I'm your Senior Enlisted Advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guests today, I would like to introduce my lovely co-hosts, Leah Matthews and Julie Mitchell. How y'all doing, ladies? Good morning. Hey Good to see what you, you again. At? Good to see you as well. Uh, y'all ready for another round of Chief Chat? Always. Always ready. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do it. So uh, I want to give a big shout out to my boss uh, and our CEO of the exchange, Mr. Tom Scholl, for referring our next guest to this podcast. So uh, they're, they're doing some amazing things in support of our nation's heroes and their families. And we're excited to talk to them today. So Ju Julie, please introduce today's guest. Today's guests are with us from the Code of Support Foundation, and they care deeply about our nation's heroes. CEO Christina Christie Kaufman and Chairman Emeritus Major General Retired Alan Salisbury founded Code of Support 10 years ago to ensure veterans, service members, and their families get the help they need and deserve. They are here today to discuss Patriot Link, a resource search engine that helps veterans find one-on-one -on -one support and free resources across the country. Please help me give a warm chief chat welcome to Christy Kaufman and Alan Salisbury. Hey. Hey guys. Christy, thanks so much. Thanks so much for joining us and everybody watching, you know what to do. Drop a note in the comments. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Share your questions or any comments that you might have with Christy and Alan. We will read those live. Make sure you follow our page and enable your notifications. Um, we have military exclusive guests for you each week on Chief Chat and we don't want you to miss any of it. Hey, so Christy and Alan, thank you so much for joining us today. Our pleasure. It's our pleasure to be here. Outstanding. Can you uh, let our let our viewers know where you're joining us from today? I'm in I'm the uh, Northern Virginia area, uh, which is also home to the Code of Support Foundation. And, and Chrissy is actually on travel, I think. I am. I, I guess that was an age before beauty thing, Alan. Uh, <laughs> I am uh, visiting my parents in the Massachusetts area, but normally I am uh, in Alexandria, Virginia. Awesome. Well, glad you guys Great. could join us today. Yes, absolutely glad you're here. And we would like to learn a little bit more about each of you. So, Christy, we're going to start with you. Beauty before age, right? Just kidding. Um, so tell <laughs> us about your <laughs> No contest. Tell us about <laughs> Sorry, sir. <laughs> Could you tell us about your time as an Army spouse and then what led you to, pat, uh, to advocate so passionately for veterans and uh, their families? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, I had the great timing of getting married right before 9-11. So I went from Berkeley, California to Lawton, Oklahoma, which was my first duty station as an Army wife. And I always say that was a culture shock for me and for Oklahoma. <laughs> and uh, a couple of months later, the war started and, and quickly kind of took over everybody's life. And I kind of realized uh, the, the way the army was going about family support and mental health um, needed to be improved. And being the Berkeley girl that I am, tried to change the entire army. Turns out that love when wives do that. And so I was just kind of getting my husband in, in some hot water. Uh, and then um, when we moved up to the D.C. area, um, I ended up writing an op-ed that was published in the Washington Post called Army Families Under Fire. I think that was in 2009. And that was enough to kind of get me, um, you know, a platform by which I could be talking to the people that could make some of the systemic changes I was talking about. I, I met with President Obama and Mrs. Obama and the Secretary of Defense and lots of Congress people, but I knew enough to know I didn't know enough. Uh, I understood my op my own myopic point of view as a battalion commander's spouse, um, but I didn't really understand the bigger picture. And uh, then I had the great fortune of meeting Alan, 
um, a couple years later and his background obviously as um, an army general and a Vietnam veteran. And we knew that, that there had to be a better way um, to, to ensure that troops, veterans and families got the support that they have earned um, through their service and sacrifice. So when I was introduced to Alan, um, he had already kind of thought about code of support um, and, and what the uh, uh, civilian America and uh, military America could do together. And then my experience as a wife with my phone ringing off the hook at two o'clock in the morning with people who are really in trouble, we kind of merged those two things to, to create an organization that really has become kind of the one-stop shop for, um, for folks to be able to, to find what they need when they need it. Uh, so it was, uh, it's, it's been a wonderful 10 years. I mean, who knew that a guy that went to West Point and Allen and a girl that went to Berkeley, me, um, would be able to, uh, to tackle something like this. But I think it was just a, 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 a great partnership from the beginning. Um, and, uh, and we're turning 10 this year, which is crazy to me that that, that all happened 10 years ago. Um, so we're really excited that, uh, that we're in a position to do the, the work that we're doing. Fantastic. Right and yes, right Alan. <laughs> well, uh, I graduated from West Point in 1958, and I don't mention that to uh, let you calculate age. I mention that because it was really, uh, the, un unbeknownst to many of us, the dawn of the computer age. So I was kind of fortunate enough to be coming into the Army at the time that computers were just looming their heads in the, in the whole world. Uh, and I would spend the next 30 years uh, becoming one of the Army's leaders uh, in bringing computers not just into the Army, uh, but on the battlefield. Even my time in Vietnam, uh, 1968 and 1969, uh, I was overseeing data communications and message switching a computer network or, uh, in the whole theater. Uh, and so that's, I've been uh, ingrained in the computer technology in the Army, uh, subsequently got me a master's and then a PhD in computer science and computers and, and whatnot. Um, what kept me in the Army, though, uh, primarily was not just the technology and the excitement and gratification of the work that I was doing, but the people that I was doing it for. Uh, the, the troops that got the, the systems that we fielded and the mentors and senior leadership uh, were just uh, outstanding. Uh, and that's, I, I could not leave the Army behind uh, in the face of all of that. And of course, that would, my love for the troops uh, would come to be, play a big part in when I had the chance to give back. That's where I wanted to focus my energy. Well, we thank you for your um, for your life of service and, and all that you're doing for soldiers and airmen. And then you, you mentioned uh, it's your 10th anniversary. So happy 10th anniversary uh, on behalf of the Chief Chat staff. Absolutely. <laughs> and then so, so it's, yeah, and, and Christy kind of touched on it that, you know, two people from different walks of life kind of came together like Megatron and created uh, the Code of <laughs> Support Foundation. So that's that's amazing and awesome. Uh, can, can you just remind our viewers what the foundation's mission uh, uh, again, is again? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, basically, as I said, it's really difficult to try to navigate um, resources, particularly if you're in crisis, right? So let's say, in my experience as an Army wife, we were working with uh, with family members that you know had a husband with maybe with PTS and traumatic brain injury and three babies and and you know problems paying the bills and all those kinds of things and trying to to figure that all out um, you know when in your crisis state is really difficult. So basically, what we do at Code of Support is we ensure people get the help they need when they need it. We do that by kind of doing a intake process, identifying what the different challenges are and then kind of pulling all these different organizations and agencies across the country to cover down on that entire um, family. And then as you're flashing here with Patriot Link, as we started doing that work, we were recognizing it was taking our team half their uh, time to just find the resources. And that's what really drove the development of Patriot Link, which is a free resource database with vetted and verified resources in there, all by eligibility criteria. So someone can do a really targeted search 
from anything from mental health to transportation to legal to financial services to equine therapy, just anything that you could think of. I mean, you think about 40,000 plus military veteran nonprofits out there. That's just the nonprofits, not even counting all the DOD, VA, and all the other uh, resources out there that are governmental. So we knew there had to be a technology portion to the solution, and that's what drove the development of Patriot Link. So we're super excited to be talking to you guys because we've developed this amazing system um, that can help people right away, but we need people to know about it. So we're really appreciative that you guys are giving us a chance to, to share that with your audience. Oh, we're honored to, Christy. Absolutely. It's, it's our pleasure. So, Alan, Christy mentioned Patriot Link. Can you walk us through how it helps our how it helps our veterans specifically? Sure. Uh, and mostly that's going to be reinforcing uh, what Christy said. But it, it turns out that uh, as we were putting the foundation together in, in 2011, the Pew Research Organization did a study on how our veterans were doing transitioning from military life back into civilian life. And they concluded that 70% were doing pretty well. They needed a little help here and there. 30% were having real problems. And, and as Christy outlined, you know, why could, how could this be? And the, the, the good news was it wasn't a shortage of resources. It was an inability to navigate this. Now, I'm an IT guy, uh, and that's like the hammer and nail. Uh, that just lend itself to a, an IT solution. And as, as I think Christy pointed out too, that it's a technology solution. Now, let me tell you, the technology is the easy part. The hard part is capturing the data from 40,000. Actually, we reduced that down to about 10,000 that are really providing the kind of, of material help that the troops, veterans, and military families need. Uh, and so we put a team to work, uh, and over a three-year period, we built a database capturing all of this information on the nonprofits. And you don't just pour information in, you vet that information first to be sure it's accurate and, and to separate the wheat from the chaff. Uh, frankly, all of those 40,000 uh, aren't necessarily doing stuff that really helps the troops. So we have to sort through all of that. And we did that. And then we categorized each of them according to uh, not only the service they provide, and Christy gave a whole spectrum, we cover the whole spectrum of resources, but the the eligibility criteria that they have, and every nonprofit is an independent organization, it can just set up its own eligibility criteria. Uh, we're here to help Marines. Uh, we're help, here to help only post 9-11 veterans. It turns out that we get a lot of, of Vietnam veterans and Gulf War I veterans that are still needing help. So the data is what we really have to concentrate and we try to keep that up to date. So. The bottom line is it's a searchable database uh, and the results that you get when you enter in your service record information uh, and the kinds of help you're looking for, you only get resources that you qualify for uh, and that provide the kind of service uh, that you're looking for. You can get local resources if there are any, you can get regional resources in your state or, or geographic region or even national resources. They're all there in one uh, compact database. So this is a one-stop shop, it sounds like. It is exactly well, that. That's exactly it's it. And, and you know, one of the things I wanted to point out too was you know, during COVID um, around March, April last year, obviously our community, uh, like many communities got hit hard, uh, particularly around food insecurity and um, housing and things like that. So uh, the back end of Patriot Link, we're aggregating and anonymizing all this data and we're seeing trends in real time. I think one of the challenges we have in, in trying to um, identify and respond to um, uh, trends that might be happening is the data we get is two years old, right? So in real time, we were able to see a spike in usage for people looking for food. We had never seen that before. So we did a, a we use our mass import feature, put the food banks in there, tag them by geography and got them in. So with, with the growing users of Patriot Link, if we have hundreds of thousands, if not millions of troops, veterans and family using this, we're going to have this powerful data set of being able to say in this area of the country for this demographic of, of troop veteran or family member, this is what we're seeing. 
at the same time saying, hey, uh, community, you only have two resources to deal with this, right? So we're really excited about the potential of, of the data informing policy program and funding decisions in a way that we just haven't been able to do with, with the data sets that we've been working with. Wow, that's very powerful. Um, Christy, can you walk us through the steps? Uh, if a veteran was needing some assistance, what would they do? Uh, what, how, how would they use Patriot Link? What, what would they do? Yeah, it's super simple. You literally go to PatriotLink.org and start looking. <laughs> so it's, it, we made it. So it's super, super intuitive, right? Like, you know, we've done all this work, as Alan has said, done all the vetting and verification. We keep it clean. We we do all the work. All you have to do is go on there and um, and actually start searching. I will say right now, uh, we, we had started with a sign-in um, uh, capability. You put your email in and then there's a drop down that tells if, if you're a troop veteran, family member, whatever. We're actually removing that. Um, with uh, with the help of some of our partners, at Elizabeth Dole Foundation, because we see that it's a it's a barrier. Um, we lose some information that way, like it's a little harder to tell who's using the platform. But we want to try to remove any barrier there is to people using it. So PatriotLink.org, go on there, start searching. There's also a news feed um, on the left hand side of the screen that that pushes. Um, you know, event type of things that aren't necessarily standing programs, but are happening in your communities. So that's a, a way for us to partner with other organizations and the VA and, and DOD and let them know these things are happening in real time. Yeah, man, that's awesome uh, resource. And me being a, a you know, a service member uh, and, and normally if you're an actual, if you're actually wearing the uniform right now, you can normally go to your first sergeant or supervisor and they kind of give you access to these, um, uh, these resources, uh, but the, I worry about the family members because sometimes uh, the service member isn't really communicating that information to the family. And so the families uh, could be going through some stuff and they don't even know who to call or, or what resources are out there for the family. And once you separate the military, you don't have that first sergeant or that supervisor or that, that, that commander to give you resources not kind of outside the gate uh, and, and still trying to figure out, okay, what do I have at my disposal? So this is a is a wonderful idea that's going to help out uh, so many people in so many different ways. Yeah, Chief, I appreciate that because I mean, even when we were active duty, as the spouse, I mean, we're the ones who are mostly finding things, right? You guys do exactly. your job at the point where where my husband was in, he was deploying every other year, right? So I was doing everything. So if anything was going to happen in terms of, of of bringing a resource to bear for our families, I was going to have to find it, right? And and yeah. while first sergeants and, and folks are really knowledgeable about the things that exist within the DOD sphere, let's say in ACS or something, most of them have no idea, I certainly didn't, that there were thousands of nonprofits right outside the gate that could be helping, right? And so that's the other thing that we, we look at as we're promoting this to troops, veterans, and families. We're talking to chaplains. We're talking to all those, those folks in helping positions, FRG. Dude, if I had a tool like this when I was an FRG leader, um, when my husband was in command, I absolutely could have saved lives. We lost people because I did not have the ability to bring in resources, particularly around mental health, um, to deal with them, right? And and we can expect the military is not a social service organization, right? So they're there, they have resources that can be leveraged, but they're never going to have everything that these families need. And that's really what drove the development of Patriot Link was that frustration that I had, like, oh my gosh, I had no idea there were these all these organizations out there that I could have been brought bringing to bear to our unit, and um, and now now there's a way to do it. No, that's that's awesome. Um, and so, Alan, or do you have any like good news stories of, of, of folks that have used it and, and maybe giving giving you guys some feedback on how it helped their family? I think we have a, a lot of good news stories, uh, and they come from from all kinds of sources. You know, this this gives me an opportunity uh, to point out that. Getting uh, access to Patriot Link is simple, www.patriotlink.org. But you can also go to the Code of Support website. Christy hinted before that uh, we have case coordinators. 
Uh, and on our www.codeofsupport.org, you don't need the www as the screen is pointing out, uh, the, the, uh, there's a get help tab. And that will lead you to Patriot Link, but it will also lead you to uh, a bunch of people that we employ who are caregivers and veterans themselves. They really know uh, the uh, the field and the, and their peers of the of the people that they help, uh, and they are available for those that have really complex needs or they don't fit into a simple uh, Patriot Link. Uh, search. Uh, if you need that kind of uh, one-on-one kind of hand-holding help, uh, you can get that through there as as well. And the, the Patriot Link, as, as Christy pointed out, uh, we try to keep that anonymous. Uh, we don't identify the people there, so we don't get as much feedback uh, there. Uh, we get it indirectly, but uh, on, the, uh, on our one-on-one case coordination effort, we have success story after success story. Uh, and I'll tell you, that's what keeps me getting up every morning to, to know that you're changing lives the way we're able to do it. Yeah, one of those success stories, um, so there's two things that, that come to mind really recently. As Alan said, every day we're, we're, we're working with folks and, and, and kind of pulling them out of the fire and, and getting them into more sustainable space. But obviously the recent uh, events in Afghanistan have, have really hit our community hard. And I think that there's this kind of overwhelming sense of did what I, did my service matter? So what we decided to do was proactively start calling out to our veterans that have served in Afghanistan and just saying, guys, girls, you matter, this mattered. Um, and, And regardless of what happens, you did these things and you did what your country asked you to do, right? And that in itself just talking to them and giving them a chance to talk to us, I would say 90% of the value of what we provide in case coordination is we actually listen to people. So many times by the time to get, they get to us, they've been shunted from one organization to another, to an agency, and we just listen to them. Okay, and then we figure out what, what is the plan that we need to work with you, right? And recently we had a, um, a, uh, a veteran who, um, lost their home uh, in the storms, right? And so being able to kind of say, it's going to be okay, we're gonna get you temporary housing, then we're gonna find you another house, we're gonna get your kids mental health therapy, all that kind of stuff. It just calms people down. When you feel like you're not alone, it makes all the difference. And I think that a code of support, particularly coming from Alan and I's point of view of our own personal experience, I know what that felt like to feel like I was completely out there on my own. And that's what we're really doing with folks. And, and, and we get such great feedback of people, you know, saying that their case managers are like paid to be their best friend, right? So it goes beyond just the connection of resources. It is truly a relationship that we're developing with people um, who are really not in the best part of their life. And we want to get them back there. So many cases. Uh, can slip through the cracks because there is no organization in the government or outside the government that does exactly what we need there. Uh, and that our, our case coordinators uh, are really, I call them solution engineers. Uh, we figure it out. We get it done. Uh, you know, we had a case where we uh, had a family that uh, was being evicted from their uh, their apartment and uh, they'd been building a home, but it wasn't ready to move into. They couldn't get a certificate of occupancy. It needed a well and it needed uh, a septic tank before they could actually move in. So to keep them from becoming homeless, we had to figure out how to meet those two needs. I'll tell you, you can dial th- or, or Google and you'll never find a source that's, yes, we'll buy you a septic tank. No, but yeah. we, we have organizations and, and individuals that we can reach out and say, We have this case, it's vetted, we guarantee you this is for real. Uh, Can you help us get a septic tank so this family can move in? Done, within days. That's uh, that's the value of the kind of thing that that we can do, uh, that you'll never find a government organization that can do that, I'm sorry. (laughs) 
I love hearing these success stories. You two are making, and your teams are making a real difference for the community. And your passion for your work is just, you're glowing. It's shining through today. I love it. Um, Christy and Alan, we do have the military community watching live with us, all branches of service and military families. Christy, if you could leave one message for our nation's heroes watching today, what would you like them to know? So I'd like them to know first, our nation's heroes include the family members and the children. Um, I think oftentimes as Chief recognized, we're kind of in the background, um, but sometimes war comes home and the impact is on entire families. So when we say our nation's heroes, I wanna make sure we're including the family members. And my message to troops, veterans and families is that you are not alone. I know sometimes it feels like it. And I know it sometimes it feels like you can't get this done on your own. That is not true. Call us, go on a Patriot link. There are so many organizations and agencies out there to help you. Uh, it's just a matter of finding them and we can help you do that. You're not alone. Your service matters. If you need help, call us. Thank you for those words. Um, Christy and Alan, we want to take a moment to pause and and turn to our live Facebook feed and share some viewer comments with you. Um, Christina says, good morning from Washington. Connor Hammett says, what kind of support would you say veterans are most likely to not realize is out there and or it doesn't get enough attention um, and then typically with regard to treatment of PTSD? So I, and this, this happened to me as well. I really didn't realize until I, we came off of active duty service that there were resources outside of the government. I think the VA has an enormous capacity um, and they certainly, you know, could do, do better. Um, we all can do better, but there are things that are in the community that the VA could just not replicate right? Um, not just traditional mental health, but things like equine therapy, fishing trips. I would include all of that in quality of life and, and, and health in general. So I think that's what I would say. The, the, the majority of, of, of us who, who have recently uh, left active duty just don't know that there is almost everything you need out in the community. Um, and so I think that's, that's, that's the one thing I would say. It's out there. It's just a matter of, of finding it. Fantastic. And Marisa says, thank you so much for all your work. Love that it's all vets and not just certain branches or wars or eras, uh, helping so many people who might not know where else to turn. So thank you for that. Um, Robin says, love this. Thank you so much for all. It's so important for all to know they aren't alone. And this is exactly what you stand for, a blessing indeed. Um, and then we do have Kiki asking, how can other people support Patriot Link? They can, uh, for one thing, uh, go ahead on Patriot Link, you can nominate a resource that might not be in there. And if you know of an organization that we should take a look at, they can, uh, alert us to that through Patriot link. Yeah, there's an ad, there's an add a resource functionality on it. So if you're an organization that, that isn't on Patriot link and wants to be on Patriot link, um, we encourage you to, to use that um, and to reach out to us. Honestly, and this gets into the brass tacks of it, Patriot link is a free resource. Um, but it is not free to run. <laughs> and so, you know, we're looking at the different business models that, that can sustain this platform moving forward. Um, and, you know, it's been grant funded generously by uh, Amazon Web Services, Google, Major League Baseball. Um, and, you know, we, we've had some really great uh, support um, but we have to figure out a way to sustain it. And so one of the things that we're looking at doing is partnering with corporations that are interested in, in branding in our community, right? And so, you know, uh, resources brought to you by X, right? So the corporation gets branding and they get an opportunity to show this community that they are actively supporting and we can continue to, um, to, to keep the platform free and uh, to keep it growing. 
Uh, and that's super important because technology can't just sit there, right? We have to continue to, to make sure that it is up to date um, and that it is responsive to folks' needs. So, you know, that's, you know, most nonprofits, their first thing is going to be, how can you support money? <laughs> Donation. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And then just wanted to share a couple from Chief's page. Um, Sergeant Rodrigue, she, she's a great friend of the Chief Chat Show. So um, she says, thank you, Major General Allen, for all of your contributions to the men and women of the armed services. God bless you. And Ms. Kaufman, thank you for bringing your passion into Patriot Link. Oh, that's thank so you. nice. You got some nice friends, Chief. Uh, yeah, I got, I got some. So listen, I got the, I got the best friends in the world. I promise you, they they come on every show. I don't know they're supposed to be working, but uh, they, they they're watching me, so that's awesome. So I appreciate it. So yes, uh, and for all of those, things, there's about a dozen more uh, people saying thank you for what you're doing. That's awesome. Absolutely. So again, congratulations right, on the tenth anniversary of Code of Support. So Christy, is there anything that's ahead for the foundation? Any, 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 any ways that you plan on, you guys plan on branching it out a little bit more or that you can yeah, share? So, yeah. So one of the things that we're really trying to do is we, we have an MOU with the VA, a, a memorandum of understanding. They are actively um, promoting Patriot Link to veterans. We're doing uh, two system wide trainings for their providers. But ultimately what we'd like to do is try to get Patriot Link upstream into the transition process, right? It's a little crazy in the year 2021 that we don't have a technology platform supporting transition, right? So people, you know, understand uh, some VA benefits and Department of Labor's in there and, and DOD, but there's this treasure trove of community-based resources um, and other government resources that just are left out of that process. And I get it, it's impossible to share 40,000 resources through TAP. Um, so we're really hoping and working with the VA to, to integrate Patriot Link into the transition process. So let's say you're getting out at Hood and you're moving to North Dakota, right? Fort Hood resources aren't going to help you out, right? You need to know what the resources are in North Dakota. So ultimately for us, that's what 200,000 veterans getting out every year. It increases the number of people using Patriot Link, which increases the data, people get more. And so that's that's one of our main focuses is how we can get this integrated both upstream into the military and through the transition process. Because we know that transition is one of the areas that people fall off, right? We know that that is a risk point, whether it's uh, PCSing from one installation to the next, whether it's a change in your family status, whether it's getting out, we know that when we look at the studies around suicide, those are the high risk times. So with transition, knowing that people are relatively still stable, right? They, they were still getting a paycheck and all those things. What happens if we can get upstream in front of some of this crisis, right? Get people connected to resources and opportunities before they're in trouble. Right. That that could change the game. And when Alan and I started Code of Support 10 years ago, that's exactly what we wanted to do. We wanted to transform the way things operate because it has to be that big and bold. You know, you can't just keep coming up with point solutions to point problems and think that's going to solve this problem that we have in this space with fragmentation. So just little things like that, Chief. That's it. You know, that's awesome. <laughs> Well, you've had a great first 10 years. We wish you all kinds of crazy success on your next 10 years and beyond. And Alan, before we say goodbye, can you remind us one more time, where can our viewers go to learn about Code of Support and Patriot Link? Codeofsupport.org will get you to uh, the, our website. It'll tell you about the Code of Support itself, uh, which is more for the 99% than for the 1%. The 1% or have the Code of Conduct. Uh, and the Get Help tab on, uh, on Codeofsupport.org will lead you to PatriotLink.org. You can go there directly. Uh, and uh, it will also give you access to our case coordinators. And there's also a donate button on there. So all y'all telling us that we're, we're great, <laughs> feel free to yes. donate. Can, can donate. I just make one, nope. one additional closing comment uh, that uh, Christy alluded to it before more than alluded to it. She said, your service matters. Uh, I know we've got some 
Afghanistan veterans out there that are still a little bit uh, shaken up by the fact that we're no longer in Afghanistan. But let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that have been there, your service does matter and did matter. You brought the United States of America homeland 20 years of freedom from terrorist attacks. You Not only that, but you actually played a role in transforming the culture in Afghanistan. Every day I'm seeing little stories about those that are not just rolling over and saying, okay, Taliban, we'll play totally by your rules. They're going to push the rules because they've tasted freedom. That's thank to, thanks to your service in Afghanistan. So don't feel bad, feel great about what you contributed to your country and to the future of, of Afghanistan. Oh man, those are awesome words. And thank you for that, sir. I appreciate it. And for our viewers out there, please share this, this, uh, this podcast with some folks that need it. I know there's some people that aren't, that, that aren't like Texar and Rodriguez and all the rest of my friends that, that, that jump on and watch the show, uh, live. But uh, there's a lot of great resources that that um, they, we've mentioned today. So please share that. Or uh, we also got the episode on YouTube and Spotify. So uh, we'll, we'll flash that up so you guys know where to go to our channel on YouTube and Spotify. But uh, Christian Allen, I just want to say um, just thank you for, for your service um, because it's a big, huge, like even for me, I know that I'm on the tail end of my career and the transition into another, you know, chapter in my life that brings anxiety because it's it's something that I don't know. I, I've I've known the military for the past 24 years of my life. That's all I've known. Uh, and now, as I transition uh, soon, you know, in a, in a couple of years, uh, it's always like, man, okay, what do I want to do? What's out there? What you know? And so you guys have kind of put a Walmart together uh, of of resources. So I can have somewhere to go and be like, OK, well, this is what I have in the area that I'm going to. So I, I just want to thank you for that, because uh, what you're doing is you, you're, you're collecting because what I've what I've noticed talking on this this podcast is there's a, a ton of great people in the world doing great things for people. I know all the negativity gets highlighted on social media and all this other stuff. But what you're doing is you've got all the great people in a in a database uh, and, and, and you're you're kind of giving us the access to those great people doing those great things for great people. So, uh, man, I, I just can't thank you guys enough. And I appreciate you for coming on the show and uh, promoting uh, Patriot Link. I definitely will be checking it out myself. Uh, yeah, because I, 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 I need to know where the resources at. So and, and I need to know the resources so I can help other people as well. So uh, exactly. it just, it's just so much goodness in what you guys do. Thanks, guys. It was such a pleasure pleasure here and and i am now going to be one of chief's friends on facebook because i want to be part of the cool <laughs> crew <laughs> but uh this means everything to us because we didn't work this hard for 10 years um and create a a, a system to set have it sit in the shelf it's only going to be as good as people know about it and so opportunities like this are everything for us because we want people to know there is help out there and we want them to get it as soon as they need it and we want your suppliers and, and business partners to know that code of support is a great way for them to show their appreciation to the troops uh, if they help us out providing these services. Alan, getting it in. Nice. Yeah, yes, yes, I love it. <laughs> well, well, just just know this means the world to all of our nation's heroes, uh, family members. Uh, retirees, veterans, all categories. We we all do this together. So, uh, I, you know, I I would be nothing with my, my without my family, and and they they take the brunt of, of most of the things. I think I got the easy part of it, to be honest with you. So, uh, just thank thank you all uh, for for what you do, and uh, we appreciate you, and we wish you all the best. If you don't, if you guys don't mind hanging on just a second after the live, uh, I got to get some information from you. But uh, man, it's been an awesome show. Thank you so much, and uh, Chief Chat out. Thank you so much.